Hello everybody, this is Alejandra Carreira, PhD candidate, and today I'm going to present the Journal Club. I have chosen this paper, microRNA 7 regulates melanocortin circuits involved in mammalian energy homeostasis. So first, let's take a look to the uh, background information. So the first thing we should know is the hypothalamus regulates energy homeostasis. So inside of the hypothalamus, we have two nucleus, the arcuate nucleus and the paraventricle nucleus. Inside the arcuate nucleus, we have the aguatine related protein neurons and the pomsi neurons. And in the paraventricle nucleus, we have a group of neurons that express SM1, melanocortin 4 receptor, and other hormones such as oxytocin, vasopressin, and so. So in the normal state, what it happens is that a leptin in a fast state, leptin is produced from the adipose tissue that activates the aguatine neurons that in turn inhibits these SM1 melanocortin receptor neurons. The direct consequence, in consequence is an increase of food intake, which makes sense since we were in a fast state. When we are in a fed state, the pancreas produces insulin that is detected by the pomsi neurons that activate this SM1 melanocortin receptor neurons. And the consequence is a reduce of food intake and increased energy expenditure. So it can happen that SM1 and M microRNA, uh, sorry, melanocortin 4 receptor are damaged or there is a lack of uh, the allele, it means there is an upload insufficiency. This is translated into hyperphagia obesity and increased linear uh, growth. This happens because uh, the neuron, it's not function as before, it's not functionally effective. So uh, the information is interpreted as this neuron is inhibited. So that produces an increase of food intake. The increase of food intake, as we know, produces that the pancreas creates insulin and that insulin was supposed to activate the pomsi neurons that is supposed to activate these, uh, these SM1 melanocortin for receptor neurons that is supposed to reduce the food intake. But because these neurons are not functional due to this upload insufficiency, there is just hyperphagia and um, a, a, an increase of food intake, an increase of body weight, obesity, and an increase of insulin. So the abstracts, abstract of this paper. First, microRNA. microRNA, we know that are non-coding non RNAs that modulate physiological response by repressing the expression of gene networks. And they found that a global deletion of microRNA7, which is the most en enriched microRNA in the hypothalamus, causes, causes hyperphagia, obesity, and increased linear growth linear growth, which mirrors the SIM1 and melanocortin 4 receptor haploinsufficiency. So they identify that alpha-synucleic and IGSF8 uh, genes are, um, are microRNA7 target genes that act in SM1 neurons to regulate body weight and endocrine axis. In humans, microRNA7 is located in the last hintron, as we can see here in this picture, uh, is located in the last hintron of the hetero heterogeneous nuclear ribonucle ribonucleoprotein K, which is an RNA binding protein that complex with primary RNA in the nucleus to influence their processing and transport. The promoter drives the expression of both genes, and it's known that genetic variants on this nucleop nucleoprotein K, locus, reduce its expression and is associated with increased height, but more importantly, with increase of troncal fat mass. These findings in turn demonstrate that microRNA7 suppresses gene networks involved in the hypothalamus, hypothalamic melanocortin pathway to regulate mammalian energy homeostasis. So their hypothesis is, can obesity be caused by non-coding genetic variants? For that, they're going to study the microRNA7. First, because it's one of the most evolutionary conserved microRNA, either for invertebrate or human. Second, is the most highly enriched microRNA in the hypothalamus with a distinctive expression pattern in a quate and paraventrical nucleus. 
Third is highly expressed in brain, pituitary, and pancreatic beta cells. And fourth, they have already studied this microRNA family. Actually, precursors of this microRNA7 family are encoded in different genomic loci, but they have identical seed sequences, which might indicate that it's an important microRNA for the cell. As well, as I mentioned before, the location of the microRNA7 uh, close to this ribonucleoprotein K uh, is uh, when, when, the, when the expression is reduced, is linked to the increase of trunk of fat mass. So let's start with the results. First, they conclude that genetic disruption of microRNA7 leads to severe, severe obesity in mice. For that, what they do is they use a control mice that has a, the microRNA7 sequence flocked, but does not have true recombinase. And then they have an experimental group of mice that it also has microRNA7 flocked, but has ubiquitous a true recombinase. This system is a tamoxifen inducible, so they have a conditional, an inducible knockout. So what they found, let's take a look to the pictures from G2, G2J, that the male uh, on Cho diet have a, have a significant difference of body weight depending if they are experimental group with the flux uh, microRNA7 or if they don't. Same with the female. And then on the high fat diet, we see a bit of a difference. The male group don't show such a different body weight but the female still does show a huge difference of body weight between experimental group and control group. After that, they analyze <clears throat> the, some, some metabolomic factors, uh, mainly blo uh, blood glucose. So the Cho diet and male mice, Cho diet female and Cho diet male, and male mice high fat diet show small metabolic changes. But the high fat diet female shows, as we can see in the picture, a, a bit of increase of blood glucose after just fed, uh, after feeding. On a glucose tolerance 10 test, just slightly increase of a glucose tolerance. In an insulin sensitive test, they, they see more, we can see more sensitivity to insulin. And in a glucose tolerance 10 test, we see an increase of plasma insulin. So they have a severe insulin resistance, which is due to an increase of a insulin secretion. Um, the next finding is that the deletion of the microRNA7 in uh, SIM1 neurons drives hyperphagia, weight gain, and increased insulin secretion. So what they aim to do here is they want to identify the specific cell type where microRNA7 family knockout is more relevant for energy homeostasis. So for that, they create a four different types of mice. A, each of them have a Cre recombinase linked to a type of gene. In this case, it's the leptin receptor, POMC, abutin, and SIM1. And they cross it with the flux uh, microRNA7 mice, means the, the mice that has uh, all the microRNA7 family flux. After they divided these animals in different groups, male on Cho diet, male on high fat diet, female on Cho diet, female on high fat diet, and they do a metabolic phenotyping screen. Apart from the body weight, blood, uh, blood, uh, blood, blood glucose and glucose tolerance and tens. They also uh, they, they put the mice in a metabolic cage measure, in a metabolic cage where they measure more detailed things like food intake, water intake, energy expenditure, res respiratory exchange ratio, and locomotor activity. So what they found is that for those mice which CRE was depending on POMC and leptin receptor, they had a mild exacerbation of the diet-induced obesity. While for those that the CRE is dependent on the agotin neurons, appear to not modulate any metabolic functions. However, for the SIM1 CRE, they have the most prominent obesity phenotype. 
So from now on, we will focus only in this group, the group where the crude combinates the group where the critical combinates in the, is dependent on the SM1 uh, neurons. Uh, on a chow diet, only females gain weight, but when challenging with chronic high fat diet, both sexes gain weight. As we can see in this picture, with chow diets, there's almost no different in male, slightly different, quite different in female, but this is exacerbated with the high fat diet. Moreover, the same one Cree a micronated and flux females display an increase in body weight that matches the male body weight. This helps them to claim that micronate 7 in C1 neurons is required to maintain the sexual dysmorphisms of body weight in mice. Uh, when they continue analyzing their metabolic changes, they see no metabolic changes in males. And in female, the most relevant, apart from the increase of body weight, is an increase of food intake and a decrease on energy expenditure. We see it here, a decrease of energy expenditure in purple, also here in purple, and food intake going up, up, up in purple as well. So uh, for further metabolic analysis, they focus now only on female, chow diet or high fat diet. So for the glucose, uh, we see that the gl glucose in, in blood is very similar. On the, the glucose tolerance, also quite similar. The insulin sensitivity here, it changes. We see more resistance for the female high fat diet. And the insulin in plasma is totally different. We see that in high fat diet females, there is hyperinsulinemia. So to confirm the hyperinsulinemic phenotype was not caused by creativity on the beta-pancreatic islets, they measure the micronase expression on these beta-pancreatic islets, and they see that it's unchanged. And they also, they measure the TD tomato fluorescence. This is very interesting because what they have is that every mice has in the ROSA 26 allele a log speed stop log speed TD tomato um, construct which is used as a marker of Cree expression. So despite um, the, the the next result is the deletion of deletion of micronate 7 in SIM1 neurons causes neuroendocrine abnormalities. Despite obesity, they found increase in linear growth. This increased level of growth hormone it can be observed uh, as mRNA, um, mRNA and also as a protein in pituitary. And they also observe an increase of insulin-like growth factor in, in liver and plasma. This, uh, these results are uh, go, go on hand with the micro, uh, with the melanocortin for receptor deficiency-like phenotype which is a, is a consequence of the reduction of somatostatin and increase of insulin uh, secretion. So with this uh, microRNA7 knockout, we are having a phenotype similar to the, the natural deficiency, this uh, human-found uh, melanocortin-4 receptor deficiency-like phenotype. Um, when they analyze the POMC expression, they see a decrease on experimental mice. Same for the ACTH levels in pituitary, as well as in plasma, and a huge decrease in corti corticosterone. This indicates a suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis more than... Yeah. So when they measure the water intake, they also see a difference. For the experimental mice, they see that there is an increase of water intake. We can see here of the female chow diet, as well as the female in high fat diet. Interestingly, this uh, food water intake can be reversed, reversed by a synthetic vasopressin analog that they, they give to the mice. And this result suggests than an inadequate level of vasopressin released from the SM1 neurons cause impaired water retention and excess water intake in these experimental mice.
Also, it is known that the SM1 haploid insufficiency in mice is associated with a 24% reduction in the number of paraventricle nucleus neurons. So, uh, what they do here is observe if is true if in our case we have a decrease of number of cells. So for that, they analyze the fluorescence of TD tomato, that as I mentioned before is an indicator of Cre function. And in the control mice, this is their result. While in the mm, a microRNA7 flux mice, we can observe a decrease of TD tomato positive cells. They do a qualitative analysis, as we can see here with this fluorescence, but also they do a quantitative analysis by measuring through facts. So they observe 18% less cells in the microRNA7 flux animals. After they want to, uh, they want to see the 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 other the upregulation and downregulation of RNA on these neurons. So through RNA sequencing, they see that there are around 500 upregulated transcripts and 600 downregulated transcripts. Among those that are relevant in the downregulated group are the melanocortin 4 receptor, OCT, vasopressin, and PDYN. And in silico analysis of RNA sequencing data, identified CREP1 as a top predicted inhibit gene. So, CREP, uh, CREP is known to mediate the melanocortin 4 receptor signaling, and its deletion leads to obesity. This is something we know from, from previous experiments. So, what they do here is they, through immunofluorescence analysis, they measure the, 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 the percentage of phosphorylated CREP. So this part will be the control group and the second row will be the experimental group. And we can observe in the first column that the amount of a uh, CREP is way less in the experimental group. They also, they also analyze this, this intensity in a more qualitative way. So the microRNA, the next result is that the microRNA7 targets genes as alpha synucleic and IGSF8 act in SM1 neurons to regulate body weight. So first they do an in silico approach, which target skin mouse that predicts a list of microRNA with a conserved binding site of the microRNA7 in their 3' UTR. And this target skin, skin mouse a, makes a list of the upregulated genes in the flux microRNA7 neurons. In comparison, also predict the target of microRNA16, which is an ubiquitously and abundantly expressed a microRNA in, in the mouse hypothalamus, and they observe that they is not enriched. So this is the prediction after the fluxing for the microRNA7 targets. And this is the one from 16 that shouldn't be altered. After applying a 1-3 fold-up regulation threshold, the RNA, RNA sequencing revealed 22 predicted target genes of microRNA7. So they chose the very high up regulated on this list. So to investig investigate the role of these upregulated genes, they perform a cre-dependent overexpression of the genes in SM1 cre animals. And they do it through a, a adenovirus delivery in uh, intravenous administration. Among these 22 targets, they select seven, the five mo most upregulated genes, one with a relevant role, that is the arrestine beta-1, that has a role in the melanocortin-4 receptor signaling, and one with the highest baseline expression, that is the IGSF8. As we can see in the picture, overexpression of alpha synucleic and IGSF8 cause an exacerbation of high fat diet induced, induced obesity. Uh, others have no impact on body weight, so I haven't included in this picture, and also not included here, but they claim that um, uh, they also increase plasmatic insulin and plasmatic IGF-1 uh, levels. 
Uh, alpha synucleic was previously confirmed to be a micron A7 target. So now what they have to do is they have to confirm that the direct target with IGSF8 on the 3 pre, 3 prime UTR. And for that, they use this type of vector that I thought it was quite interesting because when there is biting, there is a lack of a firefly luciferase. So I think that was a nice construct. Then human, another result is that human variants in the locus encompassing micron A7 are associated with high and adiposity. So this micron A7 is located in the last intron of this obviously expressed gene of this heterogeneous nuclear ribonucleoprotein K. And the micron A7 is co-transcribed with his host gene. Through genome-wide association studies, they observe, they, they, we know that there's the variants in the region upstream of this ribonucleoprotein K are associated with an increase of height and trunk fat in humans. What they did in the 40s paper is that they used phenomic scan to interrogate gene tissue traits associations, where they correlate the alter altered expression of this ribonucleoprotein K and IGSF8 and synucleic alpha in some cell types. So as a summary, I would say that in this paper, what they found is that when micron A7 is ubiquitous, ubiquitous uh, absent, there is a gain weight, obesity, increased energy intake, decreased energy expenditure, and an increased linear growth, as well as a hyperinsulinemia, due to increase of insulin secretion and multiple neuroendocrine abnormalities. Same, so, same occurs when micron A7 is absent exclusively and seen in SIM1 neurons, but with a less pronounced obesity phenotype. This suggests that SIM1 neurons are the main center of action of micron A7, but other neuronal populations might be implicated as well as peripheral tissue. IGSF8 was identified as a novel micron A7 target and with a alpha synucleic. They are individually sufficient to regulate energy homeostasis and neuroendocrine access through SM1 neurons. These findings demonstrate that microRNA7 suppresses gene network involved in the hypothalamic melanocortin pathway to regulate mammalian energy homeostasis. Thank you very much. <laughs>